Ladies and gents, welcome. Why am I going so fast? There we go. Welcome to some arena. Uh, I didn't put Elo at the top left. I'm so sorry. Don't judge me. Please don't leave. Okay, there we go. Uh, this is a 1v1 game. It is Loey the Legends. However, mid Elo, uh, or sorry, mid 700s, high 700s, low 800s is very solid these days. Because everyone's gotten better around the scene. But, you know, I haven't done a lot of arena recently. Uh, I wanted to do arena here because I saw the Civ matchup and just felt it would maybe fit. So in the blue, we've got uh, Lithuanians for Pepic, 3120. And then in the red, we have the Slavs for Gwingo. Uh, and I will say this. If the castle were to go up right in front of Blue's walls, Blue would be completely screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best map generation there for blue, as far as that's concerned. Not to mention that uh, there's a gap here, too, which can happen on the latter version of Arena for some reason. So, some awkwardness for blue. But I do think the Lithuanians are the slightly stronger Civ here. And I think it's a slightly stronger civilization due to the fact that their monasteries work faster. Uh, they get plus one attack on their cav per relic. Also easier to play because you have extra food at the start. You can see Red has had 27 seconds of TC idle time. Uh, that's because Red doesn't have all that extra food. So Red needs to make sure that the food is coming in as clean and as, as uh, efficiently as possible all the time. Um, but I do think Slavs with their faster farms, if you can get your eco rolling in the mid game, can be really strong. I think they're a bit underrated, and I think we will see them a bit more frequently. At least I hope so um, when there's a new patch, which is coming this April. So some exciting times ahead. Whoa, T90, did your mic get louder? You mean like mid-intro here or in general? I didn't change my mic audio at any point. It's possible I bumped something, but... I think everything's pretty much where it should be. But okay, so let's talk about basic arena strats, okay? Um, strategies that I consider basic are strategies where you can't really do much wrong with them, okay? And you can do one of two things. Either A, go fast castle and fight for map control to get the relics, meaning make army, like spearmen or scouts, uh, get relics and then add economy later. Or, I think this is underrated, you can just give up the relics and focus primarily on dropping as many town centers as possible and getting as many villagers as possible and then building up a big army to push. Because relics are a time thing. And if they invest a lot of time and resources into getting the relics, and you're investing that time into building up a force with big economy to push them, uh, you could be in a good spot. <clears throat> so, uh, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, again, I would expect that with the Lithuanians out here, we are going to see relics get collected. But yeah, so far, there's just a lot of efficiency things that makes me prefer blue. Uh, his lumber camp is much better. Red placed the lumber camp on the edge of a tree. So now a couple of trees are going to get chopped, and this is pretty inefficient. But it, building placement in general for Red's a little bit off. Like, maybe the houses are a little close to the TC. But it's not that big a deal. Just small things, and playing arena can help you practice those basics. So, anyways, I don't know if any viewers here had questions or wanted to chat about anything, but feel free. Uh, there's not a whole lot else I could discuss right now, as these guys are just executing their fast castle. I always go full aggression on Arena. I sell my stone to Castle even faster, and it gains me 100 ELO. Well, I can be really good against Arena players, because a lot of people who play Arena, they they don't like aggression, and they panic against it. So it's a pretty good idea. And it, it also teaches you how to make enough uh, and do enough damage against someone who's got pretty heavy fortifications. Uh, so even if you play an open map game at some point, you might be able to learn how to break through someone who walls or house walls or something. So, um, Okay, so blue's bringing in a boar. Red has just done the same. And yeah, I, I just want to talk about this real quick. Like, It can be really frustrating when you get a generation like blue has. But if you do scout it, I wouldn't mind just seeing a house here. Just so you, know, you have a bit more space. Because normally what you want to do is you want to delete back walls and side walls that are unnecessary so you have more space. So if there was actually wood here, you'd have all this area. But you can sometimes work with the walls that you have. 
Um, I've mentioned that that's an issue with arena generations many times, and we did fix it for the most part in every tournament version that I see, but I don't, for whatever reason, the ladder still has these issues from time to time, so. Yeah, castle dropping on arena can be really strong. And that's why having map control can be good, because if someone tries to castle drop you and you've got scouts out there, then you can deny that, but then you can also use the scouts for relics, so. All right, um, here comes the FAQ. What is the status on Hidden Cup 5? Status on Hidden Cup 5 is it will happen. Uh, but that could be in a year, but that could also be in three decades. Um, it will happen at some point. <laughs> there's, there's no further details on it. And I don't want to tease or do anything of the sort with you guys because those who really care about it, um, if I give you any details, I think you might get too excited and... It'll happen, but it'll happen when the time is right. Let's put it that way. I'm, I'm planning a lot of stuff right now, actually, that I can't talk about. So I've probably got three things in the works, which I think will be really good. Blue bringing in the next boar. So they've both gone up pretty fast. Your standard fast castle populations are going to be around 25 or 26. So I think they had the idea, but like a lot of players, they have the first 20 villagers down, and post past that, there's a lot of adapting. I mean, for blue, it's still not bad, right? Um, but, you know, I think it's not going to be super duper clean. Red seeding some farms. Red is on stone. Interesting. What could this mean? Is another Wondering Warriors Cup going to come, or was it a drunken one-off tournament? No, no, no. It wasn't drunken. Uh, would you guys like to hear the specific details that I... Don't think I ever gave... Well, okay, I think these details might have been said publicly, but not with the same wording. Let's put it that way. Um, okay, I'll just tell you. So basically, Wondering Warriors Cup happens because at that time, I found out that Microsoft didn't have a single Age of Empires 2 event for scheduled for eight months. And I flipped my... I lost my mind... Uh, I was I was still professional about it, but I was like, this is unacceptable. Remember, it was right after AW4 came out. I was like, the Age of Empires 2 community deserves more. And then I went to Dave, and Dave and I were like, okay, let's do an event together. And I was like, this is the event we want to do. Age of Empires 2 deserves continuous events right now. Um, that's why Wondering Warriors Cup happened. So the concept fit Dave and I because it kind of... He likes the Nomad style. We we both appreciate some different maps, and we want to do something else. But the the reasoning for Wandering Warriors Cup at at its core was Age of Empires 2 needs an event right now. It wasn't in, as something that we were planning to necessarily do multiple iterations of. Now, I'm not saying we can't do multiple iterations of it. I really enjoyed it, and I think it could be better if we were to do it again. But I wouldn't expect it for a year or two just because there's so many other things that are kind of in the works at the moment so um so anyways i don't know if that brought you any additional insight or answered any of your questions but but yeah wondering warriors cup happened because i was like having an are you kidding me moment <laughs> with the tournament schedule for age of empires 2 all right so blue figured it out blue went up here got the castle age sorted Good eco upgrades, adding farms here. I really like how the eco looks right now. Red is going to click up to Castle Age in a minute, or a second. And Red will have enough stone for a castle. Will we see a castle drop here from Red? I, think, I mean, it's likely. I'll say this, collecting all this stone to not drop the castle offensively is something I'll question a little bit. But maybe he wants to castle the middle of the map and, like, secure a bunch of resources. That's the thing. It's like, the possibilities are endless. Yeah, it was a cool event. Like, uh, having it be the standard would take away from me doing other events. Let's put it that way. So, like, I can't... Okay, so I could host an event every month. But from an energy standpoint, I don't do that. But also from a schedule standpoint, there's a lot of different tournaments happening all the time. And I can't... 
I mean, again, I could, but I don't want to fill the calendar with only T90 events. Other people want to do some cool ideas. And so there's like this good um, schedule where it's it's always split up, you know? And like I said, I think currently it's it's April of 2023 at the time of recording this. Uh, by the time it's like the end of 2024, I hopefully will have been able to have the three ideas that I have in mind currently happen. Um, but I will see. I'm working hard to try and make sure everything pans out perfectly for that. Okay, so Red's going to be in Castle Age. Red will have the stone for a castle. Red has actually brought the scout home to scout the back area. I think that might be auto scout, though. I think he scouted virtually everything. We're going to see a monastery from Red. Going to take the relics. We've got a TC from Blue. Blue likes to make the base very compact. A lot of these buildings are blocking what could be farm space. And oh, we have the scouts fighting and Red's going to lose that. If I'm not wrong, yeah, Red's going to lose that fight. Blue got the first hit. And now we have the castle at home for Red. This is something players will do if they're tired of getting castle dropped, is they will drop their own castle. Like, ha, beat you to it. And so castle will go up at home. Man, if Red only knew, man. Oh, castle drop here. <laughs> been so good. Oh, jeez. Blue is a nightmarish map, so. Well, okay, I prefer Blue's position. Blue will have a scout to be able to take any monks. Or oh, wait, will he? Oh, he saw the castle, he backed away. But we'll see if Blue can produce out of these town centers. It looks like for now, Blue is producing out of those. Also, adding, dropping the monastery and a third town center. Blue's definitely played this a little bit more meta. But Red says, screw your meta. I want a Boyar to be part of my meta. So he's making a Boyar right now. A high armored unit is very costly. I think they're proposing to make this unit a bit cheaper in the new patch. Um, which I think is is probably good. I think it's right now it's like 75 gold or 80 gold. Which is pretty wild. All right, Red. I, I love the fact you're trying to get relics against Lithuanians. Both players are going to have focus on their economies, but also these relics. Now, normally you don't see high-level players use knights or boyars or any expensive unit uh, to try and take the relics because they can be converted and they don't have any conversion resistance. Hey, buddy. Bonk! Imagine getting bonked on the head with that giant axe there. Holy... Uh, Boyars look amazing. I haven't really zoomed in on a Boyar before. Oh my god, is this the Age of Empires 2 equivalent of teabagging after you kill somebody in a game? Oh god! Oh no, the monk is there! Oh no, and it got converted! Oh jeez, that's what you get for the disrespect there, Red. Yeah, see, if that's a light cap, it doesn't get converted as fast, and the light cap does bonus damage against the monk, which is why people don't go for the unique units. Okay. Um, well, one relic for red. It's going to probably be two relics for blue. Looks like it'll be two relics for red as well, using the boyars to escort. Slab farms do farm faster. However, blue has worked up quite a healthy eco lead. Three town centers to produce villagers. And every single TC is working. So this is why I, if you're going to go for the castle, I think the castle needs to get a little bit more value and be on the front. And be aggressive. Because you, you're worked up your economy towards, um, you know, stone to an extent. And away from dropping the town centers at the proper time. But uh, it's, again, I'm getting like very coachy here. I really like the fact that Red has done this because it's a bit different. And it could catch his opponent off guard if he continues to drop castles too. Like maybe if he goes for the... Uh, the detonates upgrade maybe then as this boyar is trying to kill that monk <laughs> um he could make more castles and those castles could be forward the blue runs away with this boyar the traitor runs home see you later traitor hey that rhymed 
Blue's building placement, still not doing him any favors if he wants to expand to get more farms. But Blue's not worried about placement. Blue's worried about production. And Blue's worried about the proper steps here. Red's building placement, I really like a lot. There's so much more space in here for farms and whatnot. And decent eco upgrades as well for both. More Boyars on the way for that map control. Alright, so here's the deal. <clears throat> The Boyar is a high-armored unit. The Latus ignores armor, and that's the unique unit for the Lithuanians. So I'm pretty sure the Latus beat Boyar. Also, they don't cost as much gold. And they also get attack for each relic that's collected. And they also have more base attack. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's not true. What's the base attack of a Castlade's Latus? I was thinking it was 13. Which would be more than the Boyar, but I think I'm wrong. No, no, I think I'm right. That's so that's so crazy. Why do Lithuanians have a 13 base attack unique unit that gets extra attack per relics, faster working monasteries, 150 food at the start, and then have it ignore armor too? Sorry, I went a little too crazy. I like Lithuanians, don't get me wrong. I just I just think Latis have been, or the Civ in general has been left unchecked for a bit balance wise. And it's starting to get me hot and bothered here. How do you stop Elite Latis? I think you have to go Halb in combination with the Boyars. Because you still have some bonus damage there. There's the upgrade, by the way. Detonate. So this replaces some of your stone cost for a castle with wood. That could be really good if you want to get the production buildings. Um, Jero, I will have a video on the new patch. The... The, the thing to remember is the patch that was discussed a lot over the past two weeks and as you, there's been forum posts on and I'm sure other people have made videos on. Everything that's that was in the public preview patch is not everything that's going to be in the actual patch. So I actually recorded my patch video yesterday and it'll be uploaded once that patch is live. Like I said earlier, 95% of what is was in the preview patch will be in the actual patch but there are certain things that were changed or tweaked or removed from that so i actually made the video already with what will be in the actual patch and that'll be on youtube it'll probably be an hour like i i also gave my thoughts on certain things too which i felt was important so all right so we're gonna see castle number two for guingo has really fallen behind in villagers red's done a Good job with the relics, getting 3 to 2. And a great job with style points. And also lots of military production upgrades and whatever else. But, you know, if Red continues to produce villagers, Red will still have a healthy eco count. But just two TCs and so many Boyars. Hmm. How can we be playtesters for AoE? Um, everyone could play the public preview patch. Uh, they, they post it on Steam, and in fact, I don't even know if it's accessible right now, but you could actually look for betas on the age game in your Steam, and you should be able to, to see if it's there. Hashtag Chinese should always start with six villagers. Yeah, I'm definitely on board with that. Um, the Chinese are too classic of a civilization to change, in my opinion. I mean, you can change them, but you don't change the six villager start. Unless you want to suddenly give Huns houses and, you know, a couple other things that have been in the game a long time. Okay, so Red is castle creeping. This is interesting. That's the strat. He also has found this opening in Blue's base. So that's our first villager kill of the game. Also, Lady, don't save yourself. Oh, it's a dude. Don't do this. You're crazy. Oh, God, all the gates are opening. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know if this is going to be good or bad for Red. It actually looks like it's going to be quite bad for him. He's going to lose all of his units. But, I mean, he did. He is killing Eco. The funny thing is, I don't think Blue noticed this. If Red wouldn't have gone in here, then maybe he could have gotten to the wood line or something. Actually, I think Red didn't even notice that his units ran in. I think both players were looking at a different gate in that moment. Hmm. So, another castle here for Red, who could really use Imp. Blue will be an Imp in a second. And Red has just committed this entire game to 
castles and boyards, but it's dropped off on an economy and imperial age time because of all the focus on it. Like even here, right? Resources are there. Red is just staring at these boyards, committing his entire existence to microing these two boyards. Is it worth it? Well, they think so, the boyars. But no, it's not. Red, are you serious, bro? <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> okay. Now your opponent's an imp, and you're probably going to be like, crap, what do I do? 29 boyars! He makes more boyars! Do you know how long it's going to take you to make 29 boyars? Go up to imp! He's not even producing out of this castle. Go up to Imp! <laughs> ah. Oh, God. Uh. Okay, well, we have Elite Latis now. And that's the unit that you should be scared of, but I guess the answer is make you more Boyars! You've got three Relics, Red, so that's good. Red, stop making Vils as well. Holy cow. Okay, okay. Low elo arena is crazy. Blue only has one castle, and blue does not know how much is out here waiting. Blue has no clue. Blue doesn't know there's double castle, but there could be even more than that pretty soon. Red, go up to Imp! Go up to Imp! Click up to the Imperial Age! Because then you could make Trebs out of your multiple castles and push down the blue castles, and then blue can't make Latis. Yes, there we go. So what's been fun about this game is Blue has definitely played a little bit more optimal. He also has that more of the, like, uh, as we've said, the meta civilization. But Red is using the Detonates upgrade to really control the map. And Red is using the cheaper castles to get tons of production. I'm not sure I, I want to see you go Manganel against the Stonewall. But that's exactly what we see here. And Blue now sees there's the castle there. And Blue... He just used the treb against the mangonel. <laughs> oh, that was intentional, too. It wasn't even a mistake. You could tell Blue's like, hmm, that's a lot of stuff over there. And also, I feel like the Elite Latest versus the Elite Boyar isn't something that's been fully explored by both of them. I'd absolutely be scared if I were Blue and I saw how many units Red has right now. Because from what we can see, it's 44 versus 8. The latest are insane, but they're not that good. But it'll get better for Blue, because Blue's got two castles. Red. He, he actually stops making bills. He's not going to make more villagers at all. He's just focusing on the fights, and he's waiting. And Blue is thinking about trebbing there, but he backed away. He's scared. He heard me say, do not trickle treb before. So could really use this stone, Blue. Transitioning to the stone outside your walls is always something that's crucial on Arena. Oh, neither player has Bloodlines. That's a very good point. So the Boyars only have 100 HP. After Bloodlines, which would come from the stable, they'd have 120. The Elite Latest would have 150 HP. Okay, now we have Trebs versus a Ram. Okay, it'll work. It'll work, so... There you go. Red's microing the ram now. Okay. Amazing ram micro from Red. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? What is happening? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me, bro. Oh... The dream is dead. <laughs> the dream is dead. I can't believe he's microing a ram. Get bloodlines. Like, make a stable. He is making trebs. Make more units. <laughs> Stop microing a ram, you crazy guy. Oh. <laughs> the thing is, Blue's scared of it, which is kind of funny. Okay, redemption's in, so the mangonel could be converted. And hey, the, the wall piece is down. Now, Blue is making lots of Halbs, which is great. I think both players should be going Halb and their unique unit. Red. Elite would be so 
huge here. You need to get Elite Boyar. Red's probably thinking I have the map control, so advantage me right now. Which, in some ways, it is advantage him. Certainly with the Ram Micro and Hardy, it was a couple minutes back. Um, I, I always press the button when, for Hardy to do edits, so that's what that is. But, um, anyways, like, I, with relics, yes. With the potential to take Golden Stone, yes. The farming count is probably bringing in food at the same rate as Blue, even though there's fewer farmers just due to the slab farms. And now Red is pushing with the castles. And Blue has been so terrified to engage. And I think Blue has arrived at a point where he's thinking, I guess I have to. Here we go. Let's see it. Red's going to back up. Red, you've got to protect your trebs here. Never feels good to fight underneath a castle, which is what Blue has to do here. His castle's still standing. Red's not engaging with all the army. And will the castle stay up? It will not. The castle goes down. Blue takes an amazing fight, all things considered, though. Such costly losses for Red. But now he's getting Halberdier. And he's going to be making lots of pointsy boys as well. So blacksmith upgrades are definitely something that both players need to remember. Red especially here. And then I, I guess at this point, neither player is going to make a stable. They've probably forgotten about that. But they could get husbandry and bloodlines. Okay. What I like about Red is the fact that he made barracks. I wouldn't mind a few more barracks for either of them. Blue's working on four, and Red's working on four. And we're also going to have hand cannons from Blue, which is a nice addition if you're expecting the halves. This is a great game, guys. The Ram Micro is really what is going to be at least the clickbait on this, but this is an interesting game. Red's a lower eco aggression player. Blue has taken more of the long-term steps that you should. Being at only 67 villagers is going to hurt Red. Especially when the food's there. If you're spending the food on other things, I get it. But if the food's there, you got to be spending it. All right, this one Treb is just taking out Blue's walls. And Blue is adding more walls. <laughs> and Blue is getting fortified wall. Okay. Is Blue going to use the Trebs on the Mangonel? He doesn't have a... Oh, he does have monks somewhere. Oh, yeah, you get that wall villager, Red. You get that wall villager. Blue noticed it. <laughs> okay. Red is elite boyar now, by the way. 14 plus 2. Missing the armor is really painful, but then again, the lates is ignore armor. But armor would be helpful against the... Uh, against the halves. Okay, Red's starting to mass more Trebs from this forward position. Red also went home to seed a couple farms recently. Base looks very peaceful, I have to say. What are these fields going to do? They have a job soon? Red sees those villagers on gold. And that's that's probably why Red chose this area. Is deny the, all, the neutral golds, but also the forward gold from blue. That was really well done. And just runs away now. I love how blue got Bodkin Arrow and is getting Bracer now. I love how blue got Ballistics. All these things help the Castle Fire so much. And what what you need to aim for here if you're blue is, is about four trebuchets and then get fully pop capped with a massive army and then go try and address this. There is some raid potential. So yeah, if you're a higher skilled player, you could go to other areas of the map and try and fight for control. But I think this game is just going to be about fighting in the same area. Here go the Trebs for Blue. I think Blue just realizes there's still a hole there. Guys, if this game continues like this for the next hour, Blue is going to run out of stone because he continues to have to add more stone walls. <laughs> He's added so many stone wall pieces because of this freaking Treb. <laughs> this is hilarious. And there's the castle from red. Again, to secure more stone and gold, which is great. All right. Elite Latus, fully upgraded, full armor, 16 plus 4 attack. Could be more attack if more relics were collected. Unlikely that'll happen. Hmm. 
All right, Manganel still getting some value. Does see the latest are there. Blue realizes he's been spotted, sees the halves, and I think is very frightened. Blue's been unsure of himself in engagements, but I think I'm not going to be critical of Blue. I'm just going to say I think Red has done a really good job of having so much out there that Blue is never sure on if he can take an engagement or not. Red has consistently outpopped his opponent with army. The sacrifice for him, of course, has been that he doesn't have as many villagers. But, I mean, Blue might be able to make army more consistently. But will he actually be able to afford it if he starts to lose his castles here? Look at the army counts. 130 versus 85. This is ridiculous. If Red had full upgrades, Red wins this game. With Elf full upgrades, I'm concerned, and I'm still not sure if he can control 130 units. Let's see. This is the best start to a fight Blue could have asked for. But oh my god, the castle's being trebbed down. We got Blue is going to lose his trebs. We got a lot of po poking and prodding and pokey boy action here. There's even a random monk in there. Who knows what he'll do. Castle down for Blue. He doesn't have any units in queue. Blue doesn't have any units in queue. He's surrounded by castles. Red's going to creep forward with another castle. And Red can do this if he continues in here. I think Blue is just stunned. Blue probably plays a lot of arena and can't believe that this guy has so many castles right now. He's probably like Slavs? Slavs aren't good, right? He's like, no one talks about Slavs being good. Unless it was... Prior to DE, 2018, they were really strong, and then their farms were nerfed, and then a bunch of expansion saves like the Thuanians got introduced to the game. You're absolutely right. Slavs are not talked about that frequently in terms of their strengths, but they do have strengths, and Red has utilized them well. Good, efficient farming eco, and then castles to control the whole map. Red's now going to try and break through and not give Blue time to recover with numbers here. Now... Easier said than done, of course, as is most of this game. But before you take a massive battle, you always want to be fully queued. Because while you're fighting that battle, you want to make sure that more units are on the way. Which was uh, something that red did and blue didn't do, and that can lose you games. And I think the game could be lost here. I mean, again, there's boyars everywhere. There's some halves in the mix as well. <clears throat> blue is going to try and make latest and then trebs. But... <gasps> Oh, God, is making a castle underneath a castle. And this is open, right? So, I mean, Red's Boyars haven't been that strong, but... And it, it pains me to see just how many upgrades he's missing. But it's still good enough. It's good enough. And he's got more helps coming from the forward barracks here. I don't think he sees this, but that's still going to be some nice pressure. A really interesting arena game. I'm always concerned about these games. It's just one person gets more eco and that person wins. But Red controlled the map with castles very nicely and took advantage of that new unique tech that happened that came into the slabs this year. I'm not sure the emphasis on the on the um, syllables on the pronunciation, by the way. I say detonates. I don't know if it's like detinits or D's nuts. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but I think I've got it close anyways. I think Blue should go Skirm here. Well, it's it's difficult to go into something that you haven't teched into at this stage of the game. I think him going hand cannons with what he has left gold-wise is not a bad move. Because he already struggled to produce when he, you know, wasn't under this level of pressure. I think it's unrealistic when he's so surrounded by everything to go for a, a tech switch of sorts. But I guess he does have the archer ranges, right? I think that Red's uh, whole strategy is working, and the only thing he's missing now is a castle here. If he has a castle next to where all his trebs will be, then there's no way Blue can address that easily. He's still taking some great fights here. Blue's had the better KD, but Red just produced so much more. 62 villagers. I don't think he was ever above that. He just stopped producing vills and says, who cares? I'm not looking back here. I'm looking across the map. Is he looking here? Nope. 
just simply following his treps and his army into the battle. And the Boyars are good enough with all their attack when they're elite to kill the hand cannons pretty quickly. And I think, again, I think blue is stunned and this is a great game. I bet, I mean, red has to play slabs every single game, right? Blue calls the GG, love to see it. And the game ends there. What a fun game that was, guys. Dang. So, so we talked about the Lithuanian bonuses. You start with all that extra food. You get the faster working monasteries, which could make it a little bit easier to get the relics. Well, Red was a bit faster to the relics. Red was controlling those relics. Red got three of the five relics. So that was the first victory for Red. Then you talk about the latest. You talk about how they ignore armor and how strong they are with all the crazy attack. But Red made it difficult for blue to produce the latest because he built the castles in a position where he could contest blue's base i think a lot of players might make all their castles at home and then they take a big old battle and then eventually at that point blue gets the big numbers of latest and then it's game over but blue is put under pressure because of red's forward castles and it, red did a really good job with numbers as well could blue have done slightly better right like maybe making more latest or mixing in more house Sure, but Red could have done some things better as well, like getting better blacksmith upgrades or producing more villagers. This is Loey the Legends, right? So they're they're going to be far from perfect, but I felt like it was a pretty competitive game. And I just, I love to see players picking off meta civilizations and taking advantage of techs that uh, are not used that frequently. So props to Red for that. Well played, Gwingo. I really like the strat. Um, it almost reminds me of... Okay, so there was this player, the Legend of Roar. You'd have to go back to watch him. I think I only made one video on him. But he's 600 ELO, so he's well below these guys. But he would play Chinese. And he'd go for map control with, like, Man at Arms and Spearman. Again, lower ELO. This is also 600 ELO, like, three years ago. So I think he's 500 ELO now. And he would drop castles on the neutral stones. And then use that stone to build another castle and just creep forward towards the opponent with traps. The way Red castled neutral resources and then crept forward from that position was really good uh, and a fun watch for me. So I hope people enjoyed that. Blue, better of the KD. Blue even had better resources collected. Didn't collect as much gold and stone, of course, but did collect more overall and just couldn't cut it. GG.